Man, does it feel good to be right. Just over a month ago, Gaijin confirmed in a Q&A as well as in a forum post that the T90 would not be coming to War Thunder in the next major update. We'll have to wait a wee bit longer for that. Instead, what would be coming is a better variant of the T72 than what we currently see in game. And I straight away placed my bet on it being the T72 B3. Yesterday, Gaijin finally dropped it on us. Two new variants of the legendary main battle tank, including the B3. So if you are irritated by the lack of T90 in game so far, eh, don't be. This tank may be even better. Uh, this video is brought to you by Pledsto. Pledsto is a crowdfunding and support platform for YouTubers that aims to make supporting creators quicker and easier by removing some of the hassle associated with other platforms like creating an account, choosing reward tiers, etc. By heading to the link in the video description, you can support this channel with a monthly donation starting at as little as 10 cents. What's also great is that unlike Patreon, who want to take a massive bite out of your money, with Pledsto, it all goes to the creator. So, if you do happen to enjoy these videos and want to back the channel or help me make more content, then Pledsto aims to make it as easy for both you and me as possible. Thank you to them for supporting the channel, and a massive thank you of course to everyone who's signed up already. So coming to War Thunder in the next major update, which should be about 2 or 3 weeks away, Russia will be receiving two new Rank 7 variants of the famous T-72, the first being the Soviet Union's 1989 variant of the T-72B, and the second being the main backbone of the Russian Federation's armed forces, the T-72B3. Yes, there are two of these tanks coming, not one, not three, but we'll get into that in a moment, and given how much fun the T-72s are in game, well done Gaijin, you made my PP hard again. Now just get rid of the stock here, the first changes you decided to pull on us. Although is anybody even surprised? I mean, look at this thing. No heat round is getting through that tank. Anywhere. The T-72B model year 1989 is effectively a carbon copy of our current T-72B, which is the 1985 model, the main change being the switching out of Contact 1 explosive reactive armour, which only works against heat rounds, for Contact 5, seen on the top tier T-80U that also works against APFSDS projectiles. As for its own ammunition, it will most likely have the exact same ammo as the current version and will probably sit at 10.0 given that it still lacks thermal science and makes no improvement over the current tank in anything but ERA. It's still slow and suffers from a terrible reverse speed, so despite its having substantially better protection than the T-80B, it will be about balance with it. The next and more major variant we're receiving is the 2011 T-72B3, the backbone of the modern Russian tank force. So just to clarify, two new T-72Bs plus an unlockable module for the second, the B3, which will consist of the upgrade package UBH, or Improved Battle Characteristics, not three new tanks. Now the T-72B3 improves upon the 1989 model primarily in its second generation thermal optics, although no commander thermals just yet. I have had it confirmed that we should be getting some new APFSDS projectiles with the B3, which I can only assume means 3BM46 finets, and that should be comparable to the top round of the Leclerc. The T-72B3 also has the ability to fire the Reflex ATGM, which the T-80U has, although it isn't used a whole lot, and a better autoloader, meaning it should get the same reload rate of the T-80 as well. In other regards, this is basically the same tank as the 1989 variant you just came from so far, and with its thermals and ammunition, is effectively a T-90 without Stora 1. The T-90 uses the exact same armour, optics, engine and autoloading mechanism of this variant of the T-72, and just like it, was always effectively a T-72B 1989 with thermal imaging systems on top of it having the Stora 1 active protection system. Stora 1 would give the T-90 relative safety from most helicopters, which would be a huge benefit for it, depending on how Gaijin chooses to model it. But you should also note that it creates large weak spots where ERA cannot be applied, while the lack of it on the T-72B3 means better armour coverage and thus a much smaller weak spot. But it doesn't end there. Since the introduction of the B3, work has been done to improve it further, culminating first in the T-72B3M and then the T-72B3UBH, or Improved Battle Characteristics. Not only does this upgrade package include an independent thermal viewer for the tank commander, but it also ups the side protection of the vehicle significantly by introducing the more modern Relict Explosive Reactive Armour seen on the T-90M and T-80BVM. This ERA is supposedly twice as effective as Contact 5, 
and was designed to be able to defeat the rounds developed to counter Contact 5. On the front of a T90, that makes a huge difference, but on the side of this tank, this will mean very little, given that most top tier rounds will penetrate through even this type of ERA with enough penetration left to go through the side of the hull, but we'll get into that more in a moment. Keep in mind that the protection on the front of the tank remains unchanged, besides an additional block of Contact 5 ERA on the turret, just above the driver part. Across the front hull, the tank is still using Contact 5, not Relict. The only T-72 to be fully equipped with Relict was the Rogatka Technology Demonstrator from 2006, and this never entered serial production. Relict ERA needs to be spaced out from the vehicle, and you can see this here. This is Relict, not this, and not these. These larger blocks are known as 4S24 ERA, they actually have no official name like Contact 5 or Relict, and they use lower power explosive but in much bigger blocks. The hard case 4S24 on the turret should be immune to machine guns and smaller caliber autocannon fire, but this soft case 4S24 attached onto the side of the Relict may be vulnerable. Should it detonate though, the Relict panels beneath it will hopefully be fine, as part of the design of Relict is to only go off when hit by proper tank rounds and ATGMs. The UBH upgrade for a T-72B3 also adds bar armour to the rear side of the vehicle, so given the stock heat you have at top tier now, just forget engaging this tank, you'll struggle to get through it anywhere. All this added protection means that this MBT may bring with it something that players have been missing at top tier since 2017, and that is a significant armour meta. With all the added reactive armour, this will possibly be the only tank with some relevant level of sign protection at top tier, especially from shaped charge projectiles and autocannons like on the CV90s or automatic. Now you can angle against long rod APFSDS rounds to improve armour effectiveness, what you're more doing is angling to change the orientation of your internal modules to prevent a penetrating hit from one-shotting you. That's a tactic that Russian tank can't really use, because as soon as they angle, you shoot the side and detonate the autoloader. With the T-72B3, you will actually be able to use that tactic to increase survivability, and Gaijin also points out in the dev blog another important tactic, which is angling your turret while you're reloading to prevent getting breached, as that and the driver part will still be weak spots for this tank. Show the ERA to the enemy, however, and they'll have a much harder time killing you in a single shot, especially since with the T-72s having a much smaller carousel than the T-80s, hitting that driver part won't detonate the ammunition, and if you angle correctly, your crew will survive too. The last thing this upgrade includes is a more powerful engine. Now, this is quite possibly the most significant part of this upgrade as far as we are concerned in War Thunder gameplay. One of the main reasons some players have been indifferent about the addition of the T90 is that it is substantially slower than the T80, and given that the meta of the game at top tier is all mobility, even despite what I said about this tank kind of pushing us back towards more of an armour meta, it would still struggle without the speed as well. This is something you often see play in T-72s, where even though it's a great tank, it bloody better be, because by the time you're pushing a cap, especially on less open maps, the enemy are already in position. This is something that challengers also suffer from. You'll get outflanked, you'll struggle to push back, and you don't have that forgiving nature that an Abrams or a Leopard have, for example. The T-72B3 UBH modernization, however, upgrades the engine significantly from an 840 horsepower one to an 1130 horsepower one, which will make the tank not as quick as a T-80, it'll still suffer from that low reverse speed as well, but will bring it more up to par, not necessarily fixing, but negating a lot of the issues you get having a somewhat slower MBT than those you're facing. All that is sounding to me like it may add up to one of the best MBTs in the game, a true rival to the Leopard 2A5 and Stritzvarm 122, along with a very enjoyable top tier tank to play. I've really enjoyed the T-72A, I don't have the B yet, but I've also loved the Type 96A and the Chinese tree which is very similar, and the T-72B3 is a tank I've been wanting to see for a while. With Spinets as its top shell, mobility that nearly rivals the T-80, and substantially better protection all around with the UBH package, this tank will definitely make its presence felt in top tier games, and may become one of my favourite MBTs to play, especially if we get a top tier Russian ground pounder like an SU-17 to go with it. Unfortunately, given that it'll most likely sit at 10.7, and stock, it'll be no different at all to the 1989 model that comes before it, 
your stock grind will be absolute ass in this thing, which will be compounded by the fact that right now, it's an end of line vehicle, meaning its module cost will be increased over say the 1989 model. You've also got a lot of modules necessary to unlock, so the difference between a stock and spaded T72B3 will be about as significant as the difference between the EZ8 Sherman and an M46 Patton. But at the same BR, and with all the other stock tank issues like no thermals, rangefinder, or parts and FPE. Good luck. One of the more interesting factors of this tank's addition is what it means for the eventual T90, which I'm certain will come either next patch or in the first half of next year. With the more powerful engine, commander thermals, relic ERA and 4S24 side panels, coupled with the exact same armour and autoloader, and just the lack of Stora 1, the T72B3 may be better than the basic T90 would, while the T90A could get the same uprated engine. Gaijin recently moved around some of the rank 6 Russian MBTs so that now the T55A follows the T54s, or the T62 comes after it, as it did historically, and the T62M1 sits in a folder with it, before moving up to the T72. This is not only a more historical organisation for the tree, but it kind of makes sense when you talk about balance as well. Side note, I'd also very much like to see the T72B 1989 be foldered in with the current 1985 model, although because it's a brand new vehicle and will sit in your way of the B3, which a lot of players are going to want to get, I doubt Gaijin will do that just because Gaijin. Eventually however, I hope that's how they organise it. It would make sense and be better overall, especially since the stock T72B3 is actually a downgrade from the spaded 1989, one of the main reasons I didn't actually expect to see the 1989 at all, I thought we'd skip it for the B3 and not get the relic upgrade. But if the T90 is added, it'll have to come above the T72B3, even though it likely won't be as good, even spaded. This is depending on how Gaijin would model its active protection system, if it's well implemented and a solid benefit, then that and maybe another new round like 3BM60 would make the T90 a better tank than the T72B3, with the T90A then introducing the engine upgrade, the welded turret which will improve armour slightly, but not having the ERA coverage. Honestly, I think the base T90 would sit at the same BR as the T72B3, while the T90A would go one spot above it, or given Gaijin's track record with the T64 and T72, we may very well just skip the base T90 and go straight for the A model from the 2000s. I guess we'll have to wait and see. This will be our most modern main battle tank in game by a pretty substantial margin. It was only produced in 2016, which is when the Type 16 MCV entered service. It was first built some years before that. And will actually make the Russian nation in War Thunder span literally a hundred years of vehicle development, from the oldest vehicle in the tree, the Krasny Kavkas light cruiser, to the newest, this, the T72B3 UBH. That's 1916 to 2016. It also adds to the very modern Russian lineup we've got now, with the KA-52 and BMP-2M both entering service in 2017. That's five years after this game released in its alpha development phase. Wow. Keep in mind though that the date of introduction does not make a vehicle overpowered. What matters is its performance characteristics and its capabilities. Vehicles like the Type 16 or Challenger 2F are perfectly fine. The BMP-2M Berezog is a pretty interesting, highly competitive vehicle, but not overpowered. The KA-52 is kinda cancerous, not because of how modern it is, just because of what it is. But the T-72B3, while it will be extremely capable, I don't think it inherently imbalances the game just by being very modern. It will now give Russia plenty of tanks with thermal optics, as will the T90 when it gets added, which may allow the T80B to have its thermals removed as it didn't use them, they were added just to help Russia compete when thermals were introduced. The T80U was upgraded with thermals in the early 90s, just after the dissolution of the Soviet Union and the rise of the Russian Federation, but the T80B never existed in the form that we see it in-game, so when the T90 brings a third Russian main battle tank as well as their helicopters and IFVs that has thermal optics, I hope the T80Bs are removed. Anyway lads, I think that's it for this video, I hope you have enjoyed and if you did you leave a like, subscribe and hit that bell icon, join the 360 squad, and let me know your opinions about this vehicle and this video in the comment section below. 
Remember to come join our Discord giveaway for up to 10,000 Golden Eagles by playing in squads on the Discord with other users and submitting screenshots of your top match results. The giveaway is being extended to August 22nd, so you've got a couple more days. Head to the link in the description to join. All the information is there. And as always, please remember, keep a vodka to hand, keep your Ushanka on, and I'll catch you comrades next time. You bought this team on Wish. Oh shit. Oh, they're gonna camp us out if I don't kill this guy. I don't want to move out here, but I have to. You what? And pop. Pop goes the leopard.